Hey guys, thanks for being here and spending some time with me. So last summer when I attended PoorCon in Vegas, I got to meet Tiffany Bergeron uh, with Willie B Studios. Super, super sweet lady and a great artist. If you haven't checked out her channel, uh, you definitely should. So I'll put her link in my description for you. Um, anyway, I've watched several of her videos and in doing so, I realized that I've never done a cloud pour on a round canvas, and they do look really good on rounds. So I ordered a few 20 inch rounds, and after studying one of her videos for a while, I decided to just go for it. You know I had to have some purple in there, and so I kind of chose my colors around that dark dioxazine violet. So that's the plan, guys. We're gonna do a cloud pour on this round canvas. And I'm a little nervous. Um, I've got it on a spinner, so I'll be turning it as I'm pouring it. And it's been a long time since I have done that. Um, but we will see how it goes. One thing I do want to point out here that people may not necessarily know to look for, always watch or read in the description for the brands of paint that are being used in techniques like the pearl or the cloud pour. And this is why. Most of the time, brands don't really matter when you're pouring. But when you're doing a cloud pour or a pearl pour, and you're looking for specific results, the brand really does matter. Some brands are just more reactive than others. That is just a fact. So when you're doing a technique like this, you wanna make sure that the brands of paint you use are going to be reactive to the pearl or the cloud mix. Um, now brands like Liquitex, Amsterdam, Soho, Creative Inspirations, I know uh, Sarah Taylor uses Charvin, Triart. These are all pretty common brands um, that have been proven to work well in these techniques. So if you've been trying a cloud or a pearl pour and you know the recipe is right and you're just not getting the results you want, check your brand of paint. You may be using one that isn't as reactive as you want it to be. Now I haven't had much practice at this, so I am not the consummate pourer, turner, at the same timer kind of girl yet, but this pour did help me realize that I definitely probably need to work on this skill. I think the trick here is to just take your time the paint is fairly thick, so pour it very deliberately, very slowly, and that's how you're going to get those, I call them fingerlings, tendrils, uh, however you wanna describe them. Um, that's how you're gonna get them, is letting that paint just kind of flow out of the cup at its own pace. So, like I said, be very deliberate, take your time, there's no need to rush through anything. 
I've said it once, I'll say it again. Patience is a virtue um, a lot of times when it comes to fluid acrylics. And if you noticed that back and forth motion I was doing with my cup, that is how you're going to get that pleated stair step look. Just run your cup back and forth and uh, the way that the paint kind of layers on top of itself, it creates a really cool pleated look. Now I wanna stretch this out just a little bit. So I'm gonna leave all of the tilting and spinning in real time, just so you can see um, how slowly and patiently you need to go. Uh, again, the paint is pretty thick, so you need to give it a little bit of time to kind of move over the canvas. And uh, I think leaving it in real time is, is really, really good for teaching um, so that you can see exactly where that patience comes into play in your pores. The thing with spinning, guys, is you don't want to spin too fast too soon because you've got a lot of paint on that canvas. And I kind of liken it to being in a car. If you were to take off really fast, the inertia is going to cause you to lean back in your seat that force is gonna go against you. And it's very much the same when you're spinning with your paint. If you start off really, really fast, it's gonna make it kind of lurch. 
Um, I know this is definitely true with the bloom technique. If you go to spin too fast when you've still got all your paint on there, your cell structure is not going to keep its integrity and you're going to get wonky cells. Um, so that's why you want to start out spinning kind of slow. Let the paint move to where it needs to naturally with that spin. Um, the force is going to gradually bring it out um, and you're going to be able to maintain your composition a lot better. Now, the more paint that you get off, um, the faster you can spin it, obviously. So just like I said, take your time. There's so much patience involved in some of these techniques. It's hard to learn to get there. Um, hell, I think it's probably taken me a couple years to really work on that patience, um, but it does really pay off in the end. So here are the dried results. I've varnished the canvas and oh my goodness, y'all. I love how it looks like a wave. That dark dioxazine purple against the white creates a bunch of crazy depth and contrast and a 3D effect. Um, oh, especially right there in that area. Um, somebody said that they, they saw a dragon and I do. You can see a dragon in the center of it. Um, where it looks like the wave is coming around but I got some really really cool lacing and you can see the shift of the violets or blue pigment uh, it kind of shifts from silver to blue it's super super pretty um, but yeah I'm I'm really happy with this piece um, considering I've never done one before uh, man I hope you guys like it I want to thank Tiffany for her unknowing inspiration on this piece and for uh, making me do something that I haven't done before. It was a lot of fun. And speaking of Tiffany, she is joining Kathleen Osmore, Gail Burston, and I on Valentine's Day next Wednesday the 14th for a Love is in the Air collaboration. So please be sure and join us. We'd love to see you there. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. We'll talk soon.